Hello, my friends. Hello, and welcome once again to Stately Vaughn Manor. And today, well, it's Wednesday, and normally I'd be doing uh, Comic Book Day, uh, the world's finest team up between myself and Steve Donahue. Uh, normally, we do that on Wednesday. But this week, Steve Donahue was catching up because he was on a hiatus last week. So he's catching up this week to talk about uh, the comic book I talked about last week. And the next week, we'll be doing it together. So that's confusing. But anyway, I thought I'd do something different, comic book related, and I thought I'd do a comic book tag. But then I thought, no one's going to do a comic book tag. It'll just be you and James Holder and nobody else. So I thought, you know, science fiction. I've been thinking a lot about science fiction lately. So I think I thought I would do a science fiction tag because... Like I said, I've been thinking about science fiction. If you've watched this channel at all, you know I love science fiction. But I didn't read as much of it last year as I wanted to. I want to read more science fiction because it is my favorite genre. If I could only read one type of book, only one genre, it would be science fiction. So I thought I'd do a science fiction tag. So here it is. This is the astounding science fiction tag. It's a not very original, original tag. Uh, I know there are other science fiction tags out there, even though I couldn't find any. Um, I know Steve Donahue did one a few months ago, for example, that was pretty good, if I remember correctly. But I don't remember what the name of that was. So this is sort of a generic science fiction tag. The astounding science fiction tag. This one has seven questions, because I was too lazy to come up with more. No, it was eight. It's eight questions. I was way too lazy to come up with more than eight. So it's an eight question tag. I can count badly. So the first question in our science fiction tag, what was the first science fiction book that you read and what did you think of it? This is an easy answer for me, which because it would be uh, The Time Machine. The Time Machine was the first science fiction book that I read. I have multiple copies in boxes, but the most handy that I have is in this big omnibus volume. This is a Barnes & Noble, War of the Worlds, and other novels. And it has the Time Machine in here, along with all of these other great H.G. Wells novels. The Time Machine, very famous short novel by H.G. Wells about an inventor of the Time Machine. He goes in the future and finds out what happens to the human race. And I read that really young, and it really had an effect on me. It totally took me away that story and uh, it was sort of my gateway into reading science fiction. Uh, so yeah, The Time Machine was the first one and I loved it. I still love it. Uh, number two, what was the last science fiction book that you read and what did you think of it? The last science fiction book that I read, I just read and it would be this one and this is Logan's Run by William F. Nolan and George Clayton Johnson. Logan's Run. I like this one. I, I saw the movie years ago, of course, when I was a kid, and I really liked that movie. So I was really interested in reading the book. I, I was kind of surprised at myself that I had not read this book until now. This book's been out a while, and I believe it has sequels. Um, so Logan's Run. I like this book. It was much, it was much more pulpy than I thought it would be. It, there was a lot of action in this book, a very episodic, action-packed, pulpy, adventure type of story. I guess I was thinking it was going to be more hard SF, I guess they call it, more hard science fiction, a little bit more serious. But it wasn't. It was fun. And so that's good. I liked it a lot. This was a lot of fun, Logan's Run. It was interesting. Uh, you can tell it was written in the 60s. Um, so it's a cool book, Logan's Run. If you haven't read it and you like science fiction, you should read this book. It's pretty cool. So yeah, that one. Um, number three, if you love science fiction, what made you love science fiction? That's an easy question to ask. It's a little harder for me to answer because when I was growing up as a kid, I was... My life was saturated in science fiction. Science fiction was everywhere when I was a kid because my mom liked it. My stepfather liked it. Star Trek was always on TV. 
Um, when I was six years old, I went to see Star Wars, which is the perfect movie to see when you're six. So my life as a kid was kind of full of science fiction. Uh, and that's just the stuff I watched. And of course, comic books when I was a kid are pretty much mostly science fiction, if you think about it. Uh, so, yeah, I, I, I was full of science fiction when I was a kid. Star Trek made a huge impression on me when I was a kid. But as for reading, the book that really made me love the whole idea of science fiction, other than The Time Machine, was another book I read when I was younger, and that was this one. This is A Princess of Mars by Edgar Rice Burroughs. I was probably 12 or 13 when I read this, maybe. Uh, and then over the next couple years, I read every Edgar Rice Burroughs book I could find. I love this book. I still love this book. Uh, the Barsoom novels, they're very entertaining, uh, light science fiction bordering on fantasy. Um, but basically, they're science fiction novels, and they're fun ones, and they're action-packed, and they're kind of the perfect thing when you're young to get you interested in science fiction and to get you interested in reading more. So I moved from this to books by Asimov and um, Ray Bradbury and other science fiction writers. And so this kind of, this and H.G. Wells and Jules Verne kind of pushed me in that direction and got me to really love science fiction. So I, I do want to mention A Princess of Mars and Edgar Rice Burroughs' other science fiction action stories. Have to mention those. Uh, number four, what's your favorite science fiction movie? This is a tough one. I'm going to say Planet of the Apes is actually my favorite science fiction movie. It's not the best science fiction movie. That actually might be 2001, maybe. Maybe 2001 is the best science fiction movie. But Planet of the Apes is probably my favorite science fiction movie. I like that one a lot. Number five, your favorite science fiction TV show. This is also a really tough one. The Twilight Zone had science fiction on it, but it was also kind of a dark fantasy series. So there, there were a lot of science fiction episodes and a lot of science fiction elements in the Twilight Zone. But it was a little more than that, I think. So I could say the Twilight Zone, but, you know, and there's others that are great. Outer Limits was a great show. Uh, that was a great science fiction show. But I'm going to go with the original Star Trek. That is my favorite, the original series of Star Trek which for a long time when I was a kid was the only Star Trek. It was the only Star Trek that existed until the 80s, uh, until I was, you know, in high school. But before that, it was Star Trek, the original series. And that's still my favorite, to be honest. Great TV show, Star Trek. Uh, number six, what science fiction book do you feel should be read more often? Uh, this isn't so much, in my mind, an underrated book, but, a, but maybe books that maybe people have heard of but just haven't read for some reason. Uh, I'm going to go with a couple of them. Uh, one I'm going to go with is one that a lot of people have heard of, but I feel like not a lot of people have read, uh, and that would be The Shrinking Man by Richard Matheson. Also a horror story, but it is a science fiction novel about this guy who is uh, engulfed in this strange, possibly radioactive cloud. And after that, he gets smaller every day until he gets itty bitty and attacked by giant spiders. But they're not giant, he's just small. This is a heck of a book, uh, The Incredible Shrinking Man. Very influential book. They made a really good movie uh, about this in the 50s that followed the book very closely. Excellent film, even better book, great book. But I kind of feel like a lot of people have not read it. Uh, so I'm going to throw this out there. Another book that you have heard of, because you've heard of the movie, I just talked about it, is Planet of the Apes. This is my copy of Planet of the Apes. 
And I feel like everybody knows the movies, but I feel like not too many people have read the book. The book is very different. And while I think the that the movie worked for the story better probably overall, this is a really good book. Uh, it's well worth reading. It deserves to be read. And I feel like people don't read it that often. So I just want to recommend this one. People should probably read this more than they do. That would be The Planet of the Apes. And I'm going to recommend another one, you know, because I can, I can give more than one book if I want. That's this one. This is No Blade of Grass here, but it's, its actual original title is The Death of Grass by John Christopher. I just read this this year. I don't know how I have managed to go my whole 51 years and have never read this book. Uh, this is a great book. Um, it's not the best science fiction novel you'll ever read, but it's really interesting about the collapse of civilization due to a virus that wipes out every form of grass, which includes wheat and a bunch of other things that people eat. So, you know, that causes f massive famine. Uh, the way this book tells the story is really interesting. It's really engaging. I gotta do a review of this book. Uh, but yeah, The Death of Grass, probably out of the three, that's the one I think should be read probably more than any of them, because I think that's probably the, the least known, maybe. But you should read all of those books. Number seven, what is your favorite science fiction short story? This might seem an odd choice, but my favorite science fiction story, well, it shouldn't be a surprise if you watch this channel, is a story called The Whisperer in Darkness by H.P. Lovecraft. It is one of the Cthulhu mythos. Now, the Cthulhu mythos are a series of science fiction stories. They are science fiction stories. Every story in this book is a science fiction story. They are also horror stories. Uh, Lovecraft, of course, is a pioneer in horror. He was one of the greatest horror writers of all time. But really, a lot of what he wrote, particularly uh, in the later part of his career, was science fiction. The Color Out of Space, it was science fiction. The Call of Cthulhu was science fiction. At the Bounds of Madness, science fiction. Uh, these are science fiction stories. They, are, they might be scary, but they're very much science fiction stories. Uh, and so, yeah, I'm going to say The Whisperer in the Darkness. Again, it's not the best science fiction st short story in the world. But I like it. There's something about that story I really like. It's an alien invasion story, a weird one. Uh, so yeah, I'm going to go with The Whisperer in Darkness, which you could find in the Cthulhu Mythos tales, or a lot of collections of Lovecraft short stories. And so that brings us to the final question, which is your, which is your favorite science fiction book? Uh, and my favorite science fiction book you already know this if you watch my channel, is a novel, well, it's a, it's a, it's actually a book of short stories that form a novel. It, te it does tell a story, all the individual uh, stories that are in it, and that is City by Clifford D. Simak. This is my favorite copy of this novel. I have a couple copies of it. I have two, two that I like an awful lot. This is my very favorite. This is Old Ace. Uh, edition of City. I just love that cover. This is about uh, how eventually uh, cities die off. People leave the cities and eventually human beings change into a different form of life altogether and end up leaving the earth. And so the inheritors of the earth are robots and dogs. So it's a better planet, basically, because it has robots and dogs running things. Uh, which is, you know, totally what would happen. And so, yeah, that's what this book is about. And Clifford D. Samak got the idea for this, or he was inspired to write this after he experienced World War II. And he saw some of the just awful, horrible things in World War II, uh, which he talks a little bit about in another version of this book that I've got. This is an extra fancy edition of city that I've got. Um, 
this is a really nice one from the Eastern Eastern Press. Eastern Press? Eastern Press. Uh, this is a really nice edition. And in this edition of City, there is a forward, an author's forward. Um, and let's see if I could find the part that I want to read. Yeah, this is a little paragraph I'm going to read, which talks about why he wrote this book, basically. I personally was not so struck with the massive destructiveness of the weapon concept as I was by this evidence that man, in his madness for power, would stop at nothing. There was, it seemed, no limit to the horror that men would inflict on one another. I had held some hope, frightful as World War II had been, that in the centuries ahead, men would be able to arrive at some accommodation that would make peace possible. Now, with the realization of this new dimension of brutality, I lost what little hope I had. And so he wrote this book, which to him was kind of a comforting story. And he wanted to write about the people that he would want to write about who had to be robots and dogs because they couldn't be people. And so this is, I love this book. If you have not read City, find a copy and read this book because it's really, really good science fiction. Excellent book. It is my favorite science fiction book. What is your favorite science fiction book? Tell me, do the astounding science fiction tag you are all tagged, all of you. Feel free to do it if you like. Okay, guys, I will catch you next time.